directly World Bank Data Bank World Development Indicators. Actually, there are many other databases, many other things you can be doing about many, many other things. When you're thinking about macroeconomic concerns, in my opinion, this is the best source. Yeah, therefore, directly go to World Development Indicators. That is the case. Now I need to select a couple of countries, yeah, because I'm telling you, you should be doing this for Mexico. So here is Mexico, and I will do this for my other country, the Russian Federation. Yeah, I can be selecting many others and just be comparing. Yeah, we can do it even later. So I'm selecting my two countries. Then you go to series. One option to find the indicators that I'm asking for is to type here GDP real or GDP nominal. Nevertheless, there could be a problem because when they here are talking about GDP, they are not talking about GDP in, in real terms. They are not talking about real GDP. They are talking about GDP at cost and prices. That is part of the definition. When you are talking about the real GDP, that means that you are using constant prices. That means that you are removing the impact of the inflation. That means that you are taking one year as a best year. In the video, by the our university, they are talking about the year 2009. Here, I was just watching a few days ago, uh, the, base, the base year is the 2010 at cost and prices. Yeah, so you can type here GDP, but actually there are thousands of indicators related with GDP and you will find a lot of things and then will be quite complicated in the end to find actually what is important because you can see many things we measure as a percentage of GDP because GDP is very useful indicator, but I'm not looking for this. I need to go up, down and there are many, many variables that could be useful. Well, but I know because I had experience Then when I just click in here, starting with G, then I go directly to indicators about GDP. Yeah, that is oh, what I'm doing. Here, let me go down here slightly. Let me go again here, G, and then I have GDP. Then you will find GDP constant 2010 US dollars. I ask him to do this in US dollars because also you can measure GDP in your local currency. That's what means LCU, local currency. Constant 2010, that means at cost and prices, that means GDP in real terms. Therefore, you were looking for GDP, real GDP. You will not find this easily here because the program is assuming that you know that at cost and prices, our real GDP is the same. Current prices or nominal is the same. And here you find current prices, current US dollars. Yeah, that means nominal GDP. How I know that? Yeah, because I need this one. I need this one. How I know that this for sure is what I'm looking for? Because here is a, line, a letter I, and here is the description. When you go here, you will be start reading and you will find here in the beginning the definition this is also a definition of what gdp is the definition that's in your textbook a definition in the previous video yeah and then you will find here data are in constant 2010 us dollar this means that we are measuring gdp in real terms when you go to this with current us you go to the definition again you will find a definition of what is GDP, and then you will find this data are in current US dollars. A precios corrientes, a precios corrientes, a precios constantes. So in, in current prices, in uh, at custom prices. That is what's mean, and therefore I know, oh yes, this is what the professor is asking for. Yeah, the nominal and the real GDP. Then I asking you to find this in per capita terms, right? And then I had the GDP per capita. You can do it by yourself. I mean, you can look for population and then dividing these two indicators by population every year. So you will get the GDP per capita. That is what the software is doing. We know we had a census every five years, every 10 years. Nevertheless, we had predictions uh, and we had estimations, calculations of the population, at least for every year. And we're using these estimations, these calculations of population to try to estimate this. Actually, it's INEGI, is the Federal Reserve, is the, the Institute of Statistics of Geography in different countries, providing the World Bank with this kind of information, right? And, and then here we had the GDP per capita. So it's not necessary for me to be divided by population. Already here is, I know this real because it's a constant, 2010 US dollars, but also I was asking you for this in in the current US dollar, here it is, yeah. 
without inflation, with inflation, as in the video, yeah? Now, I'm asking you the economic growth rate, the GDP growth rate. It's here, yeah, GDP growth annual percentage. How I know? Again, looking here, you will be reading this definition and you will find that this is what in theory we mentioned before. So I can see what is the annual percentage growth rate of GDP. Can you do this by yourself? Yes. Yeah. You go up, you have this in, in your Excel and just with a simple formula, you will get the, the percentage change in your GDP and you will be able to get this, uh, this GDP growth rate. This is the, the variable that most of the time we're discussing now. We're in a crisis. How do you know we're in a crisis? Because this is number is negative. We will see that in the case of Mexico for 2020 is about 8%. What does means that the GDP, all these final goods and services that we're producing in a period of time inside of the country at market prices was falling. How much? About 8% in the last coronavirus pandemic crisis, right? And also I'm asking for this in per capita terms. Why? Because population is very important many times. When you're analyzing this in the case of China with the policy of only one child, versus Mexico, any children, well, welcome, no troubles, with countries with a, with a very low fertility rate versus countries with a very high fertility rate. So this is changing because when you're taking into account population, this is actually changing uh, how rich, uh, how developed it could be your population, yeah, when you take this into account, the per capita terms. So I'm selecting here. And this here, these are the seats, uh, indicators that I was asking in your Congo, yeah? Would you, you go with your Congo? Here is the activity. If you were selecting something else, so that could be the wrong answer. If you were selecting another source of information, so just be sure that actually you are measuring what I'm asking for. Because I'm asking you for GDP in nominal terms. What does mean GDP at current prices, at precios corrientes? GDP in real terms, GDP at constant prices. Now the best year is 2010. Yeah. Later is changing. In the past was another year because uh, with, with the time, the kind of goods and services we are producing and what is relevant for your economy is changing. And therefore we have to update the best year that we are using to estimate this real GDP. Per capita divided by population, nominal and real at current prices, at custom prices. And then the growth rate, how much is this is changing? The percentage change in here, sorry, the percentage change here and the percentage change, change here in per capita GDP. This is what I'm asking for. Mexico and other country. Why? For comparison, I would like to be comparing what is happening in my country versus other country. Yeah, who is better? This is the time from the 1960 to the 2019, but here I will have the option to select this for all years, including the 2020. So I will do it just like that, selecting all these years. I will apply the change. I will get this here. And then my advice, don't allow this one, use Excel because it's important to know how Excel is working and then you, can, you should be able to be comparing. Yeah, what is, uh, to create the graph. Somebody's creating the graph from here. Well, it's an option if you are doing this correctly. That is not my advice. It's better for you that you know how that cell is working. And this is the reason I'm asking you to do this in Excel, right? Uh, for instance, in the 2020, here is Mexico. Let me show you that the GDP per capita in real terms at constant prices in Mexico was 9,000. If I would like to see the same indicator for the Russia, for Russia in the 2020, so I can see that the GDP per capita in Russia is slightly higher. Shouldn't, it was not the case. In the, in the beginning of this century, Mexico was slightly better than, the, than Russia, and now Russia is better than Mexico. You can see GDP per capita in real terms, close to, to 12,000. So 3,000 more, almost 3,000 more dollars per capita in the case of Russia. That means that the economic growth in Russia is better than in Mexico, yeah? But in the beginning of this century, I was the first time in Russia in the 2000 seats, now 1000, yeah, nine. But in the beginning, seats, 
$2,000. In the case of Mexico, in the very beginning of this century, in the 2000s, we used to be slightly better than Russia. This is the kind of analysis I'm expecting from you when you are comparing with the other country. So let me go to the year 2000. Here it is, 2000, 9,000. So you can see that for Mexico, over the last 20 years, we have been improving just a little bit. Yeah, almost nothing. Yeah, probably Lopez Obrador was already here or not. Probably any politician is doing something wrong, and this is the reason we're observing something like this. And since that at least Putin is doing it slightly better, or something is wrong with this indicator, and actually there are many other indicators to try to see, to try to discuss about economic development or the standard of living of different countries. Nevertheless, still GDP is one of the most popular indicators about the standard of living, about economic development, about economic growth, when actually we had many others. So guys, this is the kind of analysis, this is the kind of data that you need. Here you have the option to download this.